right, so in the last part, we showed how to properly headspace the barrel. Now we're gonna show how to actually install it onto the upper receiver. For that, we're gonna need our vise, and we're gonna need something called a reaction rod. This one is made by Geisley Automatics. And what this tool is gonna help us do is to prevent warping the receiver when we torque on the barrel nut. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna secure the reaction rod into the vise. Once we get it in there. Make sure that it's very tight. You don't wanna have any movement whatsoever. We're then gonna take the upper receiver if you've got an ejection port door, go ahead and pop that open. And very gently slide it over the reaction rod. The next thing, we want to protect these threads. We don't want them to warp. We don't want to cross thread them. But we also don't want the metals to bind. So we're going to apply a liberal amount of either a grease, or in this case, we're going to use an anti-seize compound anti-seize compound and we're going to apply it to the threads we want to go all the way around Once you have the anti-seize on the threads of the upper receiver, now we can take the barrel and we can insert it into the upper. Make sure this pin aligns with the notch in the upper receiver. And then very carefully, insert the barrel into the upper. You'll probably get a little bit of resistance once the pin reaches that notch. Press firmly and make sure that the barrel is seated. Since we're using the Battle Arms Edition Fortis switch rail, it comes supplied with its own barrel nut. This is made out of T7075 T6 aluminum. Take the barrel nut, and we'll slide it over the barrel to the very back of the receiver. And we'll go ahead and just thread it on by hand as far as we can go. Fortis recommends a torque spec of 55 foot-pounds. So for that, we're going to need a torque wrench. And for this barrel nut, we will be using the Fortis tool to get the proper torque. If you're using this rail or any other that provides a wrench or a different type of tool or socket head for their particular barrel nut, it's always good to have the force at a 90 degree angle from the head of the wrench. This will give you the most accurate torque reading. To start, we don't want to take it to 55 foot-pounds immediately. So we're actually going to start at right about 35. we have that in place, we'll go ahead tighten the barrel nut down and once we reach that point of resistance we want to hold the barrel and the upper against the reaction rod to make sure that it stays completely rigid. This is going to apply the torquing force to the steel on the barrel instead of the aluminum on the receiver. This will prevent the receiver from warping and cracking under stress. Now when we torque it the first time, we just very, very gently, once you hear that click, we then want to take it and we're going to back it off. We're going to do this two more times each time, slowly increasing the amount of torque that we're applying to it. So we go ahead and loosen the threads a little bit. We 
increase the torque. Go ahead and increase the torque to 45. Reset the tool head. And we'll do it one more time. Again, very slowly applying until we hear the click. And then back it off again. And now we'll take it to our torque spec, which is going to be 55. And reset our tool. And then very carefully, very slowly, apply pressure until you hear that click. If you've done this three times, there's no need to do it one more time. The barrel nut is torqued and it is secure to your upper receiver. The military standard for torquing your barrel nut is between 35 and 88 foot pounds, which is a very broad spectrum. Using free float tubes like the Fortis Switch or various other manufacturers allow you to get an exact torque every single time. So it's much easier to do with one of these versus a GI spec barrel nut. It also helps to increase accuracy because you're always going to be setting an exact amount of tension on your upper receiver every time. Join us next time, I'll show you how to assemble your gas block and gas tube assembly and how to place them on your barrel.